Well, hi there, boys and girls. I just want to go over a few things that are review, and we have found relative max and mins and absolute max and mins, and I want to bring in the uh, information about the derivative that's going to help us classify increasing, decreasing relative max and relative mins. This is just review, but I'm going to show you some facts about the derivative at these points. This graph has a relative minimum at this point, and before or to the left, on an open interval to the left, this graph was decreasing or going down. That means that it had a negative derivative. All of those slopes, those little baby tangent line slopes, are negative. At this point, the slope is zero, which means that's a critical point. We are going to classify critical points today as either um, relative max or relative mins or neither. After that, the graph has a positive slope, which means it is increasing because the slope is positive. Then it has a relative maximum. Again, the slope is zero. And after that, the graph is decreasing. So let's go take a look at uh, pictures for increasing and decreasing. When we say a function is increasing, we are simply saying as x goes from left to right, there's fancy notation that x2 is bigger than x1. This just means left to right. So as x goes from left to right, if the y values are getting bigger, then f is increasing. And then if the y values are getting smaller, then f is decreasing. And we're going to be able to say using the derivative whether a graph is going up or down. So what we're going to say is f has got to be continuous and differentiable, otherwise we can't find derivatives. If f prime is positive, this means positive, bigger than zero, then we're going to say f is increasing on that interval. And if f prime is negative, we're going to say f is decreasing on that interval. All of this stuff, I'm going to show you a really good way to organize this. So let's just go after this and get a definition of first derivative test. This is what we're doing with increasing, decreasing, and all this other stuff. If f prime is positive to the left, that's what this means, positive to the left from some point. And then is if f prime is negative to the right, from that point, then you have a relative maximum. And that should make sense. If the function is increasing and then decreasing, we've got a positive derivative and then a negative derivative. You can see that that's a relative maximum. And then if f prime is negative to the left and then positive to the right, then we've got a minimum. And that should also make sense. If f prime is negative, our function is decreasing. And then if f prime is positive, our function is increasing. That creates a minimum. Then, if f prime has the same sign on both sides of that critical point, there is not a relative extremist. So let's just say it goes from decreasing to flat like this and then decreasing again, sort of like, you know, this. Then it's not, it's neither a relative max or a relative min. This is very important. Whenever we have to justify any statement in calculus, we must appeal to a change in the derivative. That's the only way you can get your justification point. You've got to appeal to a change in the derivative. I'll show you what I mean. So let's do an example. Here is a fourth degree polynomial that I don't think anybody in here could graph in their head. It would take a long time to do by hand. So what I want to do is go through using calculus to say some things about this graph. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find f prime of x. And f prime of x is going to equal 12x cubed minus 12x squared minus 24x. And what we're going to do now is we're going to set f prime equal to 0. What does this find? Does anyone remember when f prime is 0 or undefined? This is finding critical points. All right, so here we go. We're going to set this equal to 0, so I'm going to factor out a 12x, which will give me x squared minus x minus 2, which I could even factor some more into 12x times x minus 2 and x plus 1. Now that I have this factored, I'm going to set this equal to 0. So that means that x equals 0 is a critical point x equals 2 is a critical point, and x equals negative 1 is also a critical point. And this is what I want you to do to organize your thoughts. Draw yourself an imaginary x-axis. 
well, not, not imaginary, draw yourself an x-axis and put those critical points on the x-axis. So we'll do negative one here, we'll do zero here, and two out here. And what we're going to do is we're going to check the derivative in these intervals. And if the derivative is positive, we're going to say it's increasing. And if it's negative, we're going to say it's decreasing. So I'm going to have underneath that, I'm going to say that's f prime. And above that, I'm going to say that's f. So let's pick a number to the left of negative 1. In other words, let's try f prime at negative 2. And all I care about is, it, is this going to be positive, negative, or 0. So that means we're going to plug in. Well, I know it's not going to be 0, but because I found the only three places it's going to be 0. I only care if it's positive or negative. So 12 times negative 2 times negative 4 times negative 1. It's easier to plug it in into the factored form. So we get a negative number because I'm going to have three negatives together. I, I realize that that's, what, 48? It doesn't matter the magnitude. All it matters is, is it positive or negative? So f prime is negative on this interval. That means that f is decreasing. Now let's plug in a number between 0 and negative 1. You probably remember doing some of this in pre-cal when we were doing our inequality checks. So f prime of let's say negative one-half. That's in the interval from negative one to zero. And again, I only care if this is positive or negative. So that's going to be 12 times negative one-half times negative one-half minus two will be negative two-and-a-half. And then negative one-half plus one is a positive one-half. Now, this is a positive times a negative times a negative times a positive. I do not care what the number is. I only care whether it's positive or negative. So I get f prime positive, which means that f is increasing on that interval. And you see how this sign chart sort of shows what just happened? We went from decreasing to increasing. This creates a relative minimum. And we can even see it there. Decreasing to increasing, that's relative minimum. Because f prime was negative to the left and positive to the right. We're going to organize that all in just a minute. Okay, let's go down here a little bit and find f prime at like 1. So I want a number in between the critical points 0 and 2, and that's going to be 12 times negative 1 times 2, and that's going to be a negative number. So I know that f is decreasing on that interval. And what have we created now? You can see we went from increasing to decreasing. This creates a relative maximum because f prime was positive to the left and negative to the right. Okay, let's try f prime at like 3. f prime at 3 would be 36 times 1 times 4. And I'm, again, I'm plugging it into the factored form up here. That's obviously a positive number. It's positive 144. It doesn't matter. You don't need to know that. All you need to know is positive. So I have a positive first derivative, which means f is increasing. And what did we create again? We created a relative minimum. So we're going to go down here. We're going to make lots of statements about this, and we're going to say why. So here we go. f is increasing on the interval. And I'm going to use parentheses here because we're, we need the derivative to be positive or negative. We don't take derivatives at endpoints, so this is an open interval. f is increasing on the interval from negative 1 to 0 and 2 to positive infinity because, this is my justification point, f prime of x is positive, you just write greater than zero, on those intervals. Scroll down just a little bit. Now let's make a statement about decreasing. f is decreasing on what intervals? Well, it's from negative infinity to negative one and 0 to 2. Why? Because, let me extend my page here, because f prime of x was negative, and you just write less than 0, on those 
intervals. All right, let's go make our last statements here. We're going to make statements about max and min's. We're going to say that f has a relative minimum at x equals negative 1 and get my and in there x equals 2 and then we're going to we're going to say why because f prime changed notice I'm appealing to a a change in the derivative sign and we're going to say why and why I'm sorry we're going to be more specific not that just it changed sign but we're going to say how it's changed sign from negative to positive and that's my justification point for a minimum f prime changed from negative to positive now my last statement is where that maximum was and that was at zero so I can say that f has a relative maximum at x equals 0. And I'm going to say why. Because, ah, because f prime changed sign from Ah, I didn't write that correctly. From my uh, air slate is having a problem here. Positive to negative. Mm, that's really bad. Sorry. Anyway, so that's uh, that's all for that example. Great job to our football team. Uh, your seniors, you guys have beat. Uh, Pierce three out of four years. That's uh, that's amazing. So anyway, I will see you guys on Monday.